As uh, you said, we know that the climate is still heating, and we know that that's largely driven by uh, fossil fuels, and the impact it's had we see almost daily by this point uh, in terms of uh, floods and heat waves around the world. We also have, as you said, this Paris Climate Agreement, and the key target within that was to limit temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial le levels. Um, and all countries agreed that's a really crucial benchmark for being able to protect huge swathes of the planet. Now, uh, there are, despite that agreement, emissions are still going up. And in a new report today, the UN said just how little room for manoeuvre we have left and what that will mean for the next few years. Deluge and devastation in northern Italy today. Scenes from a climate in crisis, this latest disaster already claiming at least eight lives, and cancelling the weekend's F1 Grand Prix, whose racetrack is now underwater. This just days after a deadly cyclone hit Myanmar on Sunday, residents here picking through wreckage of environmental breakdown, which world leaders say is a top priority, but is more chaotic by the year. Floods, typhoons, extreme heat, extreme side effects of the burning of fossil fuels. And a UN agency today gave its grim diagnosis for the next five years, saying the world is now likely to, temporarily at least, breach the crucial 1.5 degree goal of the Paris Climate Agreement, and that one of those years is almost certain to be the hottest ever. During the coming 15 to 20 years, we estimate that that might be more the permanent, uh, permanent feature of uh, of climate and uh, actually there's no return back to the good old uh, days uh, because we already have such a high concentration of uh, carbon dioxide. Exceeding 1.5 degrees for one year would not mean that Paris climate target is broken. It would be temporarily nudged by a natural climate phase called El Nino, the heating of sea surface temperatures above the equatorial Pacific, so powerful it heats the whole world and interrupts its delicate weather systems. This happens to be a very sensitive region as well in that there are connections to many other parts of the world and it affects rainfall and temperatures across the globe. El Nino emerges every few years. The last, in 2016, brought the hottest year ever. But now, before the next arrive, bringing more heat, Canada already burns and swelters as wildfires spread across Alberta. And scientists say that even El Nino, the largest naturally occurring climate phase of the past few thousand years, is dwarfed by the impact burning fossil fuels has had in just a few hundred. Now, it's really important to underscore that temporarily breaching this 1.5C threshold is not the same as the Paris target being broken. That is about a long-term average. And all the UN are saying today is uh, that the next few years, because of this additional impact of El Nino, it could just uh, tip over it slightly. Um, now, there, it's still important uh, for two reasons. One, even a temporary breaching of that target still brings devastating consequences. If you think to the, the, the uh, heat we had in the UK even last year, and that wasn't during an El Nino phase. So the UN is saying with El Nino, it's going to get much worse in the next few years. And secondly, is almost uh, what this report tells us, just how close we are to not actually keeping our long-term targets. And they are targets which the countries came together and said are crucial to protecting large swathes of the of the planet.